Hi, welcome to my channel where I share my knowledge on programming the DJI Tello drones with Python. Today, we're going to look at setting the drone's flight speed by adding a scale bar to our previous Tkinter keyboard controller GUI. Now, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so as you see here on my screen, everything is on GitHub. So as before, you can go there and you can pull it and just run it in your environment to see the magic. But if you want to know the intricacies of the program, let's go ahead and dive into things. By first, looking into the SDKs. Now, we can't look into the DJI Telepi library because there's really no indication within the library as to how to set the drone's flight speed. I've looked, there is a way to query its speed along different axes by querying IMU readings, the inertial measurement unit. And what's returned from those is the speed reading of the drone in the X, Y, or Z dimensions. That doesn't help us set the speed in any way, state, shape, or form, whatever you want to say. So how do we uh, find out what to do? Well, you can look to the SDKs, the software development kits for the Teledrone. Now both SDK 2.0 and SDK 3.0 have this in their uh, set commands listing. So as you can see, set speed X. This is 2.0 by the way. Set speed to X centimeters per sec second. And this can be anywhere from an integer of being 10 to integer 100. Now looking into the 3.0 SDK, we have the same exact thing except that we can get an okay or an error as a response. So we'll wanna keep that in mind when we're running our program. So this is uh, kind of good to know what the command is, but how do we actually use it? Well, let's implement it in our Tkinter keyboard controller GUI from a previous video, as we did with flip buttons in another video. If you haven't checked that out, please do. So again, GitHub, go there if you want to, and you don't wanna watch this, but if you want to, let's go into PyCharm. So here we are in PyCharm, and I have this module titled Adding Set Speed Bar. I also have the Tello module up here because I was going through it, trying to find anything that I could to help you guys find the way to set the speed, and really there's nothing here. SDK has the only reference. So when I was first starting out, I was probably just playing around with the SDK, figuring out how to use the commands on it exactly and what the syntax was. And in doing this, I figured out how to do this, implement it in my GUI. So we're gonna do three steps. We're gonna start with step one. We're gonna create a scale bar and set its default value, and then we're gonna create a button. So we're gonna create a scale bar, which is like a button slider along a certain scale value. Now we're gonna have this scale represent the different speeds we can set our drone's flight speed to. With the minimum, we're gonna have B25 and the maximum B100, which was seen in our SDK. Now. We're going to use this to increment or decrement the value we want to set the speed to. And then we're going to use the button itself to make sure that we send that uh, set command to the drone so that it sets its flight speed to that value in the scale bar. So first we got to define a tkinter scale widget. So we do this, we call it speed bar and we put it in the root window and then we have some additional parameters. Now I have a brief description here in this comment on each parameter, and I'll be showing more on the screen as we go through it so you have a better understanding. But we have from equals 25 and to equals 100. That's the minimum and maximum values of our scale bar. Now the length, that's the scale length in pixels, the way it appears on our screen. Next we have tick interval. Now we want to have, allow for four flight speeds, 25, 50, 75, or 100. So with our scale going from 25 to 100, we're going to have the intervals go at 25. Since the minimum value is 25, then we'll have 50, 75, lastly 100. And then below this, we have digits equals three. So that's the number of digits to show to the right of the decimal point for the value. I don't want that. We don't want decimals. We just want integers because we can only set the drone speed uh, set command to an integer value no floats, no doubles. So past this, we have a label so that we can indicate what the speed bar is about. We're gonna put drone flight speed. And then we have resolution. This is the step value. Now, you thought this was defined just by tick interval? No, you need both because the tick interval specifies the ticks drawn on the scale. 
but this specifies the actual step size, which we wanted to be 25. Now lastly, do we want to show the value next to it? I have this set to false because it makes it a little cumbersome on our screen. And then I'm going to have it oriented horizontally so that it goes horizontal along the GUI instead of vertical. Again, I just like the way it looks. So after defining our scale widget, we're going to go ahead and set the default speed that that little tick on the scale bar is going to be set to. We're going to set it to our drone's default speed, which we defined as 50. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that scale bar is set to 50 also when we launch our GUI. Now, lastly, to make sure that we can send this to the drone and set its speed, we're going to create a set speed button. We're going to put it in the root. We're going to define its text as reset speed. And then we're going to have to work on a command next to understand uh, how we're going to actually set this uh, value of the drone. Now, this height parameter, this was all just for me to have uh, so I could show you in the intro that cool little thing displaying the different speeds. I had to reduce some resizing so I could capture everything rightly. But you don't need that. Just know we got our speed scale bar with these different uh, parameters you can specify. We have it set to our default speed for when we launch our GUI, and then we have a button to reset it. Next, let's go ahead and actually put these on our GUI in our run application method. So in our run application method, you might see I went ahead and packed things a little differently. There's nothing much to say here. It's just so that I could have it formatted in a nice pretty way. Take off land button still there, our keyboard binding still there, and then we have our capture labels label still. The only parts we add is that scale bar and that button. We're gonna go ahead and pack the scale bar in the west side of our window, so the left side, and we're gonna just give it a little padding. And then we're gonna put the button right below it in the southwest corner. And that's it for step two. One more thing, that method. So we have this method here. Create a method to update this speed. It's pretty simple. We're gonna go ahead and call it update speed takes in itself as a parameter because it's part of the class. And then we go ahead and we type self.drone.speed. And we set it equal to our self.speedbar.get. So what's get do? That gets the current value from our speed bar and returns it. And then it sets it equal to our drone speed parameter. Now, I hope that's not confusing because it can be. With all these selfs and dots, and uh, different method calls, it can get quite confusing. So let's just look up again. Before we even started on this, in the previous uh, keyboard controller GUI, we had this. We defined a speed for the drone to fly at. Now we did this because in our flight commands, we have to pass a speed in to our start flying method. So knowing that, we could call this at any point and change the speed, which is what we do in our method. We call the parameter of our GUI class that is self.drone.speed, and we're gonna set it equal to the value in that speed bar. Now, that's good and all and all and good, but how do we actually uh, execute this method with our button? As you can see, we went ahead and bound our set speed button to this command, self.updateSpeed, and it doesn't return anything, uh, so we don't have the brackets and such. That's it. We also go ahead and print to the console that we're resetting the speed just so we have a little bit of reference that it's being done properly and we're not getting errors as we saw in the 3.0 SDK could be a possibility. So you saw in the beginning we tested this, but let's go ahead and test it together. Turn on the drone, connect to the Wi-Fi, etc. Let's do it. All right, I've connected to the Tello. Go ahead and run our program and see how fast we can go. So here we are, we're gonna go ahead and hit run. We'll watch our GUI pop up. And let's hope that we don't crash the drone today, testing our different speeds. There's our GUI. So let's go ahead, let's take off. All right, let's go ahead and move it up. Over there. All right, so let's move around at our default speed, 50. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's put it down to 25. Let's move it to 
nice and slow. Alright, so that's pretty slow. Let's turn it around. Let's do a little fast. Let's go ahead and go to 75 now. That's turning faster. Alright, so we'll go ahead. We're gonna zoom right to the camera. Pretty fast. So that's pretty fast. I don't know if we can get much faster than that, but let's go ahead and put it on 100. Yeah. That's, that's going pretty dang fast, I'd say. So that's the maximum speed that we can run our drone at. Well, uh, there's that crash we were talking about. Okay, so we did it. Regardless, we got to show that we could change the speed to 25, 50, 75, 100, and the drone obliged and went that speed. Now, um, I advise you all, if you're going really fast, to just beware of corners and walls. Because, uh, you know, momentum is mass times velocity. And if we're going at too fast of a velocity, with a, no matter the size of the mass, you can't stop it. So we just saw some of Newton's laws at work. That was great. Now, uh, I hope you got something out of this. I hope it was helpful. I really want to make this all free and out there. I want people to learn like I did without the struggles. So if you found anything in this useful, please like, share, comment, subscribe, whatever. I appreciate your support. And until next time, have a great day.